I heard Vince really reaming somebody out one day, and I'm like, golly, what the, you know? And I didn't understand why he would do that. But then after I got there and I learned more about the business, then I understood that this man has a billion-dollar operation here. And one person can walk out and say one thing on that TV and everything will crash. <laughs> The Wrestling Time Machine, available right here on Sports Kita at WrestleBinge on YouTube and anywhere you find your favorite podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm Mac Davis, your host for The Time Machine, and with me are my two co-hosts. I have them every single week, and trust me, when I say they're co-hosts and they're legendary, they are. Introducing first, our very first legendary pro wrestling journalist, Bill After. Hey, Bill. Oh, thank you, and I always use Lou Albano's line i'm a legend in my own mind <laughs> and next to bill of course is wwe hall of famer holla holla teddy long hey what's going on man how you guys doing all right i'm hey. doing great hey guys wait hey. You, you get any feedback on that cm punk show last week um uh, no i didn't get any feedback on it i've been i've been looking at some stuff but uh did nobody say anything you know concerning what i said or anything about the conversation but before we get started here, I want to find this out right here. Why is it that you and I are working for Sports Keter, Mac, and we don't have no swag? Every week, Bill After has on a different I had this. I had this made myself, actually, at the Willow Grove Mall in my neighborhood. Wow. Now, yeah. now you feel bad, don't you? <laughs> well, no, not really. <laughs> well, next time, get her to make us some. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Guys, uh, by the way, by the way, do you know, I'm so excited. Do you know what time of year this is? It's award season. This is the Sports Kita Pro Wrestling Award season. It's my favorite time of the year here at Sports Kita. Last year, hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of fans and our expert panelists all joined in. And keep your eyes out on sportskita.com because we're going to be announcing soon when the voting will start and when you fans and our special panelists will be able to start voting. Very psyched. As a matter of fact, CM Punk, who our show was about last week, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I got a number here. I got this actually from Sports Kita. Over 100,000 votes yeah. for CM Punk last year on yeah. that uh, on that particular award. So just incredible numbers. And folks, uh, that is coming soon, as, as Bill says. Do you know how many days he spent putting in all those votes? <laughs> <laughs> now, his, uh, controversy, his controversy spurned the fans to, to, uh, uh, to heights I've never seen. Um, they love him. Yeah. Yeah, Teddy. well, like I like I told you guys before, man. You know, he, he's the, he's the, he's the, he's the man. Teddy, let me ask you: some big news dropped down Monday night from WWE. You're going to be on TV this coming Monday. Uh yeah, I got a call from him. Uh, going to be at the Raw uh, 25th, I believe it is. 30th. Uh, 30th, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Raw. Jesus Christ! I'm <laughs> 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 well, Raw's 30th anniversary there, so uh, so so happy to be a part of that, man. And uh, can't wait to you know get there and see all the fans. And uh, you know, man, you know me. I'm just going to be holla holla hollering. You might come face to face with me. Well, that's, that's okay. That's okay. Undertaker will be there, and if you start giving me problems, then it'll be you one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's take the time machine back, and we're going to go way, way back. Are you ready? All the yeah, way so. back to June 17th last year. That was way it's back, way wasn't back. it? Boy, I'm tired already from the trip. The <laughs> day uh, That's the day that Vince McMahon stepped down as chairman and CEO of WWE. I've got to know. Teddy, I kind of know what your answer is going to be uh, because you and I, the second something started happening, we were throwing images back and forth and different things that we were seeing about Vince McMahon. And uh, Bill, how did you find out? When was the first time that you actually heard that Vince McMahon had stepped down? Well, unquestionably, I'm glad you brought that question up. Um, I got a call from a friend at the WWE office who had just heard about it, and uh, uh, he said to me that Vince was going to step down, that uh, he had been given some advice that it's best for him to do this, and 
my reaction was, there's no way. If he's going to step down when he's going to be at home or whatever, he's not going to be that stay-at-home grandpa. He's good. It, no, this no. is going to fester in him when he when he uh, uh, decides that this is it. It's not it. It's going to make him angrier. It's going to make him. Teddy, you know Vince so well as well as I do, and you can never tell him he can't do something because he will go out of his way to make it happen. Right. Yeah, exactly right. That, you don't want to say that to Vince. If you tell him something ain't going to work, he'll make it work. Yeah, Teddy, I, what was your first I initial think, reaction stepped, when you Mac, heard? Mac, I think he stepped down um, on that advice, which may have been bad advice, to regroup from the scandal and come back stronger than ever. Now, yeah. keep in mind now, that was on June 17th, and not, but uh, it was just over a month later when he announced his actual retirement. From WWE. So, I mean, here we got two steps that, you know, one after the other, and both of them are things <laughs> that you would never imagine you would hear when it came to Vince McMahon. Well, I think, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, I think Vince, you know, I think this was good for him. I think he needed the rest. Uh, he was a work hog. He's 24 7, brother. You know, that's all he did was wrestling. So I think if him getting away, you know, and maybe, you know, getting some rest because, he, you know, he hates sleep. He told me one time that sleep was his enemy. So he didn't like, you know, so maybe, you know, with him taking a break and getting away, you know, maybe got a chance to, you know, rest and get some sleep and get some rest and get his thoughts back together. Because, I mean, we all need that rest. That rest is really important. So uh -huh. I think he had some time to take off, got him some rest. Now he got his thoughts together. Now he's ready to, you know, kick it back in gear. Now, I don't want to. I can't see him resting at all, Teddy. That's just me. My I don't. Opinion. I don't want to gloss over the fact that he is having some legal issues and troubles that are on. But this show is not going to focus on those issues. I think that those issues have been talked to death. To be honest with you, I, I think it's more important and more interesting, to be quite honest, of who is Vince McMahon? Why did this stuff go down the way it went down? And where are we going from here? I mean, that day of June seventeenth and the time machine of twenty twenty two was a major day in wrestling history. And now here we are, you know, with, right after the first of a new year, and he's already back in power. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, you know, there's not, nothing we can do about that. You know, <laughs> know what I mean? That's, that that's you know, if he's able to do that, then, you know, I'm all for it. You know, I'm glad to see him back in power. You know, my decision was never for him to even step away anyway. But like I said, it's like when I left, you know, I got home and I finally got some rest and got my thoughts together. I felt like a different person. You know what I mean? So I think it was I, like you said, Bill said he did, probably didn't get no rest. I don't know, but I hope he did. But right now, Vince, you know, has to prove something and he's going to let everybody know that he's more powerful than ever. Well, I hate to say this. I hate to say this, but I think his rest is plotting revenge. Um, <laughs> every, I, really? I mean, that's him. But I want to take the time machine back to what I've seen in him. I mean, I've known him since the late 70s mm -hmm. when uh, I used to see him backstage with uh, uh, WWF president Willie Gilsenberg and Vince McMahon Sr., his dad. And you could always see him looking for angles to, to and I don't mean wrestling angles, but business angles to do something. There was always this sense of, well, I'd like it this way. I know what my dad and Mr. Gilsenberg are thinking, right. but I'd like it this way. And I think Little by little, as I got to know him, I saw more and more of this sensibility coming from him that, you know, we can't be small like this. We can't be a territory like this. We need to break out. We need to be bigger. And I, I don't even I think in his mind, as big as the company is, it could even be bigger at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I always look at stuff, you know, every day, you know, the old saying is a lot of things happen. They always happen for the better. So I think we just sit back and just uh, watch all this play out. What has changed? Let me, let me ask you, Bill, what has changed with Vince McMahon from the time you first met him to where we are today? Well, he's in power. He was never in the when I first met him, uh, he was trying to figure out uh, who's who and what we we're doing with everybody and how he could probably step into his father's shoes once he uh, bought the company. Teddy, when when did you first meet him? Uh, Nineteen ninety-eight. What was the circ What were the circumstances? Well, great. Uh, 
I, when I first met him, I first went in, you know, and they hired me as a referee. So I was refereeing. And so uh, he he was walking out of Gorilla one night. And I think he, I, I don't know whether he knew me or not, but he did run over to me and he spoke to me. And, and, and I think he said, welcome aboard or something like that. And that was the first time I met him. Wow. Wow. Let, let me ask you, because of everything that's taking place with Vince coming back in, Stephanie walking back out again and actually uh, leaving the WWE, what are the differences between Vince and Stephanie and their management skills and how they treat people and work with people backstage? Well, I, I think that Vince and Stephanie are basically the same. You know what I mean? They're just strictly business. You know, no hard feelings against anybody that they try, you know, to, to make them feel bad or whatever. But it's all about business. And I used to, I used to, I couldn't understand that too. It's like I heard Vince really reaming somebody out one day, and I'm like, golly, what the, you know? And I didn't understand why he would do that. But then after I got there and I learned more about the business, then I understood that this man has a billion dollar operation here. And one person can walk out and say one thing on that TV and everything will crash. So I understand exactly what this business is all about. And I think that they're not hard, hardcore people. They're just people that when they see that you're not taking your job serious, then they're going to get right in your ass and let you know, hey, this ain't how this works. This is business. This is a job. So yeah. I, I find nothing wrong with that. Stephanie um, <clears throat> has become that nice, soft, charming face of the company. If you Through the years, whenever you'd see Vince on a, uh, on a TV talk show, whether it be Larry King or any of these shows, He's pretty, you know, he'll chuckle once in a while, but he's pretty businesslike and hard-assed even on uh, non-wrestling TV shows. The the only uh, one I saw him on uh, uh, recently, uh, what's the name of the, the uh, why can't I think of his name, uh, on the talk show <clears throat> that he was one of his broadcasters. Come on. Um, uh, you, you're, talk, you're talking about, I know who you're talking about now. Who got, Cosell? No, no, not no, Howard no. Cosell. Uh, oh, Pat, McAfee. Pat, yeah, McAfee. Pat McAfee. Pat yeah, McAfee. It just came back to me. Hey, oh. you said that you said this is the time machine. No, you're right. <laughs> right. And let me tell you something. The magnanimous Theodore Long, the referee of the decade. <laughs> Little Howard Cosell. But Pat McAfee, when he had him on, Vince was, uh, Vince was charming Vince. I hadn't seen him like that. But Stephanie... Has become the face of the had become the face of the company. She was very charming on camera. She did so many things to help charities and women through the company, um, and she she had that <clears throat> that charming personality that Vince never showed to the public that he may show to his grandchildren and stuff like this. But I saw Vince backstage. Uh, he was charming at times. And I saw him chew guys out at times. Stephanie, some of the people that worked for her said she was very hard to deal with. I never saw that. Anytime I saw her at the shows, she was extremely uh, giving to the people that she was working with. She was businesslike, but you could tell she wasn't going to chew your head off like her father might. I would assume that Stephanie's a lot like her mother, Linda McMahon. And Teddy, you had a chance to work with Linda. Uh, is Stephanie and Linda more alike than Vince and Stephanie? Well, I don't know. I didn't, you know, I had a chance to do a couple of skits. I won with, uh, with, uh, Linda McMahon and, uh, I might've been in something else, but I never had it. You know, I never did try and put them two together of the reaction of both of them, you know, cause I didn't never look at it like that. You know what I mean? But uh, I, I never did see Ms. McMahon as much as I saw Stephanie and Vince. So I couldn't tell you when I had encounters with Ms. McMahon, you know, she was always sweet, just as nice as she yeah. could be, you know, great. So, but uh, with Vince and Stephanie, I've had a chance to see, you know, both sides. So. <laughs> you yeah. see the devil I knew, come out. <laughs> I, knew Linda, I knew Linda pretty well. Uh, Linda, when she wanted to, could put on that Southern charm. She had that, that great Southern charm about herself. Uh, I was in her office many times discussing maybe the possibility of being the editor of their magazine at times. She was businesslike, but she wasn't scary businesslike. Um, I, I think Stephanie inherited more of her mother's uh, business and charm than any <laughs> than anything I saw in uh, in her dad. And, and that brings brings up uh, the the other McMahon, Shane McMahon, 
uh, who is, by the way, to me, one of the most terrific pro wrestlers. There's an office guy beating up the wrestlers, right? <laughs> but he was, he was absolutely terrific. But in, in terms of business, he was very much like his father. He was he made a decision. You stick with that decision. This is what I want. I don't want this. I don't want that. Echoed his father. Teddy, you and yes. Shane, any memories of Shane McMahon? Uh, no, just always had a great time with him. Whenever I got to TV, he was there. You know, me and him would talk, shoot the shit for a little bit, and then we'd go on about our way. Did you feel like uh, Shane may have been the less business one of the of the three or the four, I guess, when you got Linda involved too? But was 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 uh, Shane more of the just have fun and enjoy his time there at WWE, or was he business like his dad? Well, he was, you know, he Shane was laid back. He was cool. You know what I mean? You know, he knew how to, you know, get along and with everybody. But Shane was also business, too. Now, you know, he he inherited that. So he understood, too. You know what I mean? When it's time to play, it's time to play. But when it's business, it's business. Understand that Shane was the in charge of the uh, website. He was in charge of the magazine, which led to a very conf uh, confrontational relationship between uh, the companies that I worked for and WWE because they had their own wrestling magazine at the time and we weren't granted uh, we weren't granted access so I saw a different type of Shane I hold nothing against him at all it was a total business move but he was like his dad he was cold business but he also yeah. could be a, a charmer yeah yeah you know I, I think a lot of people and, and Teddy I think you and I may have touched on this on one of our other shows <clears throat> excuse me but I, I don't think a lot of people see Vince as a sensitive, caring kind of individual. They always see the Mr. McMahon persona that we see on TV. And I think he's played that so well that people believe that's who he truly is. Have you seen moments where Vince was actually being human, being a grandfather, playing with his grandkids, something like that, that would surprise most people? Well, I haven't seen. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm just saying. I don't. I, I've, I've never seen him. You know, with his grandkids. You know, I've never. Right. You know, I think I doing some WrestleManias. I did see Shane. Uh, you know, bring the kids around and everything. But I never did. You know, because during those times, you know, Vince is busy. You know what I mean? Trying to get the show together. But like I said, he was. You know, he's, he's he has his own way. You know, of of being a nice guy. Because I remember one time in uh, in in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I worked on and it was my birthday, but I didn't care nothing about that. You know what I mean? And I didn't even tell the company, you know, that it was my birthday. Cause I mean, like I always say, I know whatever the events would have worked on his birthday, just that simple. Yep. But anyway, we did, I, I was doing something there. We, you know, with take her and all of a sudden, you know, we get through doing that. He liked it and he shoots right by me and he hits me right on the shoulder and he says, happy birthday. And he keeps right on walking. Isn't that, great? Isn't that great? Yeah, he keeps on walking. I remember when my son, who's 33 years old now, when he was little, I got to bring him uh, backstage one time and uh, Gorilla Monsoon was there and all that. And then Vince came out and he says uh, to my son, well, who are you, young man? And he said, Brandon Apter. And uh, Vince said, looked at me and he said, blue eyes, blonde hair, bring him around in about 20 years. <laughs> all right guys let me ask you with he everything that's serious too he probably was, he was. <laughs> yeah. with everything that's going on and vince now being back in the wwe and i believe i heard today bill you might know more about this than i do i thought i heard today that he no longer needs the board to make any decisions really so vince has pretty much taken over wwe completely now does vince sell the WWE, or was that just something to create the the drama that we needed to get him back into position? Tell you what do you think? Well, I I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Is is you know this is like I've always said. This is Vince's life. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I and it's hard, you know, to give up your life. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. You know. And then the other thing too, everybody has a price. And, and there's some people out and there's some people out there that can pay that price. So that's that's like between a rock and a hard place there, man. I just don't know. You know, like I said, this is Vince's life. And I imagine when he feels the time is right, when he feels like he's ready to step away and he feels that he's done enough, then I think that's when he'll maybe let it go. Yeah. Bill, yeah. how about you? Well, I think it's uh, I agree with Teddy 100 percent. Uh, I don't know if he's ever going to be able to.
to really let it go. He keeps changing the rules as uh, at day day to day. It's another. He doesn't he, play by rules. He plays yeah. by his own set. <laughs> right. He makes well, his own rules. Yeah, but as well, you can see that everybody counted him out and was saying, well, now this is wonderful. It's the Triple H and Stephanie and uh, uh, Nick Khan uh, company now. And like I said before, he's not going to let that happen. He needs to keep control. If he sells his company, somehow he's going to remain partially in control. Maybe it'll be a partnership. And like I kept saying, and I wrote the column about this, the man that needs to buy that is uh, Dwayne Johnson and his seven bucks thing. I think a partnership between that company and WWE would be magic. Absolutely magic. Now, you I say agree. a partnership between the two. How would they, how would they sell to Dwayne and partner with uh, between WWE and seven bucks? How would that work? Well, I don't know. I'm not a money guy, but I'm sure they could come up with a deal where seven bucks owns an equal amount of the company. Well, I, and I think, and I think with them, with partnership in it, if the company t is going to expand, you know what I mean? It's going to really, it's going to blow up. And that's what it needs right now. You know, just to, uh, just a big, huge, something just to blow it up. And I think that would do it. What about AEW and Tony Khan? His name has come up in the mix. Do you see the Khan family as somebody who could pop us, possibly buy the entire WWE? You're asking if this is if this could be a con job? Yeah, yeah. Could it be a con <laughs> job? <laughs> All right, that's what he's asking here. So my feeling is that Vince McMahon will do anything but sell it to AEW because then you've given in to your competitor. That would be equal to him uh, uh, selling out to uh, Ted Turner way back when in the WCW days, right, Teddy? Right. Yeah, yeah I, I guess don't, he. I don't I don't ahead, see Jeff. Vince. I, like I said, I don't see see that happening. I don't. I'm like Bill. I don't see that happening at all. And like I said, on the con family, I don't really know much about them, so I really can't speak about it. But I don't. I like. I don't. If it, if that happens, Jesus Christ, that shocked the world. So yeah, I, keep I, this in mind. Keep this in mind. When Vince took over WCW, he killed off all that. The talent came in. His guys, his guys, killed all of them in every match. Tony Khan could do the same thing. Tony Khan buys it. Correct. And then he's got a match with John Moxley against Roman Reigns. And John Moxley is beating Roman Reigns. Oh, then he's got Brian Danielson uh, beating uh, Sola Sikoy. He could just devalue what WWE is and said, we're AEW. We're the best. Without Vince McMahon in the WWE, does the WWE survive? I think so. I, the, the show must go on. You know what I mean? We have to look at it in, in, all, in, in more than one way. You know, Vince could become ill and not being able to run it. Who's going to go for, Who's going to go there? So I think it'll survive. Maybe it may not be as successful as when Vince is not in charge, but I think it will survive. Yeah, Bill, do you think it gets to a point where if somebody buys this, let's say Disney buys the WWE, if that happens, how long before a lot of the real wrestling people disappear from the back and it becomes producers and writers and screenwriters who know nothing about wrestling? I'm buying, I'm the Disney Corporation CEO. I'm buying this company, why? Because it's making a zillion dollars. Yep. It's successful. If it's not broken, don't try to fix it. Don't do what WCW did and start bringing in people like Jim Hurd and all these other people that knew nothing about the business. This We're is the wrestling people. Right. This is a successful formula. If I'm looking, if I'm Disney and I'm looking to buy this, why do I want to buy it? Because it's got a fan base that's unparalleled anywhere else, right? It's making tons of money. Why again fix it if it's not broken? Yeah. And I imagine, right. I imagine Vince would like to go to Disneyland and ride a WWE ride there. Cause I would imagine that would fall into the theme park uh, attraction. I don't know how you wouldn't add that to the theme park, you know, having WWE as a part of your portfolio. Well, it's been talked about with Universal already to maybe even put the WWE Hall of Fame into that place. I was just about to say the Hall of Fame would be a perfect place. That's a perfect place for the Hall of Fame to fall. It really is. 
I mean, it's visited by tons of tourists every year. That'd be a smart move. But there are other people out there. NBC Universal is another group that's out there right now, and they want to buy it up. And of course, that's because they currently have them on the Peacock Network. Uh, you know what? I, what's bothering me is you're giving me these scenarios, and now I see Vince backstage at Disney. Well, we have Goofy go over Mickey <laughs> Mouse. All right, that's it. no questions. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? I, I think we just got way too much involved in this. You know what I mean? So I think what we need to do is just sit back and let this play out, and then we'll all find out what happens. You know, like you said, it'll come out in the wash. Where does it come out? That's that's my last question. Where does this end? I, You know, he ended, you know, last year, the top news had to be Vince McMahon stepping down from WWE. Here we are in 2023, and I firmly believe he's going to be the biggest news story of 2023. Yeah, but keep, well, keep in mind here, keep in mind here that what nobody has talked about is that USA and Fox run have the current rights to the show. For what now. is stopping them not from buying it, but increasing the value of what they're going to pay WWE and then... We're not for sale right now. We're with USA. We're with Fox. We don't need to sell at this point. Thank hey, you very much. Hey, congratulations. That's all I can <laughs> say to him. Congratulations. Although now today, news did come out. There are some numbers that show Fox is paying way too much money in rights fees to WWE, and they're not making their money back. In fact, it's way in the other direction. So does that cause Vince a little speculation about could he still have SmackDown after this contract ends this year? Well, like, like, I, like I said, that that question there, I can't answer. You know, I'm not one of these uh, board of director guys and stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. Not, why not offer SmackDown up to uh, USA Network again? Raw is doing great numbers. They're making money. So maybe they'd want another product. They've got NXT. They've got Raw. So why yeah. not get the whole family in there? Could they pay the amount that uh, Fox is currently paying? I I don't know. I tried right. to buy the company, but my credit card maxed out. So I yeah. can't. Because <laughs> hey, like I said, this kind of stuff here, man, is in-house. We don't know. We don't know what kind of money these people got. And they got and they're working these backdoor deals and behind closed doors. So we right. don't really know what's going on, man. So that's what I'm saying. Just let it go and just watch and wait and then see what happens. Teddy, what, what would happen if Teddy Long had the money, wanted to buy WWE? What's the first thing you might do as the guy in WWE? Well, the first thing I would do, if I had that kind of money, I wouldn't buy WWE. I would just be enjoying the rest of my life. I wouldn't okay. I, I don't I don't want that headache. Well, <laughs> let's say you let's say they said, here's the money, you can buy the company, put yourself in a different mindset here. What is there anything you would change? Well, I don't know. I'd have to go in and see, you know what I mean, really pay close attention to how the product is being presented. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I haven't been really watching it, you know, like real watching it. Why mm -hmm. I watch it, but not really watching it. So, like I said, if I if I bought it and I put my money in it, then I would go and pay close attention. Once I went there and see how the product was being used, if there was something I didn't like or some you know, wasn't going the way I think it's good, then I'd make that change. But if everything's working fine, it's like you said, Bill, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, what about you, Mac? Let's say you had all the money and you wanted to buy WWE, would you make any changes? Yes. I, I, I think I'd make a lot of changes. Um, and, and here's my problem, and this may be a good place for us to end up on here. My problem with Vince coming back is the thought that maybe he'll get his hand back in creative too much, and it'll change the course of where WWE has been going, which has been on an upward trend. Uh, I get concerned that he may step back in and cause things to go back down. Because I, I think Vince is great in the company. Vince does not need, I've said this before, I said it about a year ago, as a matter of fact, Vince has no business leaving WWE. He needs to step down from the creative process, run the company, let others handle the creative that are more in tune with what is happening today. That's where I think he needs to be. I think Teddy Long needs to be brought back as uh, um, as the commission. And let's talk about that Teddy Long. Holla, holla, you'll be on TV this coming Monday night on Raw. Uh, Kenny, yeah. how did that happen, by the way? How did you become uh, the SmackDown general manager? How, who came to you? How did it happen? Uh, it just came to out of the blue. Uh, one night I got the TV, 
And I mean, nobody said nothing to me at all. And about an hour before we went to, ready to go live, one of the writers came up to me and he told me, he said, hey, uh, you're going to be the GM GM for SmackDown. And uh, and the next thing I know, they were telling me, you know, Vince was going to, you know, come out and uh, and present me to General Manager SmackDown. So I was, brother, that was the most nervous t night of my life. I never knew how that happened. Yeah. Good story. Never knew that. Teddy, you uh, you uh, did a podcast, or you're going to record a podcast pretty soon with another referee, am I not mistaken? Uh, Mike Yoda. Uh, I'm going to go uh, say a big shout to Mike Yoda, man. He's a very good friend of mine. Me and him rode together for many, many years. So uh, he doing his own thing, asked me if I you know, give him a shout out. So later on tonight, I'm going to be doing that with Mike Yoda. Very cool. Bill, how about you? What's going on well, with you right I now? I want to back up first that this was from Sports Key. It wasn't in 1995. $19.95 thing from the Willow Grove Mall. And yes, you both should, uh, you both should. And thank you, Sports Kid. I'm, I'm the senior editor, so that's that's one of the perks, I guess. That's why we have you here. Yeah, so I will be, <laughs> uh, I will be hopefully uh, seeing Teddy at uh, the 30th anniversary. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Bill, yes, uh, also I want to mention too, uh, you know, in uh, March, I don't have the date there, but we're going to be doing the Legends deal there in St. Louis. Yep. Uh, putting a lot of their, their J.J. Dillon, a lot of other guys are going to be going into the St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame. Yeah. And uh, so I want to mention that. And I know you can't be a part of that, but I was yeah. making sure you get a, get a hold of Herb there and talk to him. And so we can make sure that we got well, Mac there. Mac in. Sure, sure. I'm in already in that. I'm blessed to be in that uh, in that Hall of Fame. And I will uh, uh, do that. Also, uh, sometime in March, I think March 13th, I'm at the uh, there's a big reunion going on in Ohio that uh, uh, I think Bobby Fulton and his son are promoting. And I think you're there, Teddy. I know I'm going to be there as well. Where? Where's that at? Somewhere in Chilohe, Ohio or something like that. I, can't I don't remember. know nothing about that. All right. Well, we'll find out about that. Okay. But, but again, my, the most exciting thing to me right now, beside doing this podcast, of course, is the award season starting yes. here at Sports Kita. I can't wait to any of uh, uh, any of you have a, a, a pick once the voting starts for uh, a wrestler? Give, of the give, year? give me throw a few things at us real quick. No well, wrestler of the year. You, you gotta you gotta pick. Hmm. Wrestler of the year. Yeah. Twenty twenty two. Wow. Um. That's kind of hard. I'm sitting here trying to think. There's a name that comes to mind. Look, there. MJF. Let me put it this way. MJF and AEW. I think is probably one of those guys who is the most over in the last year. I don't know about wrestling because they don't wrestle as much as the guys in WWE, but MJF to me in the AEW, that's who's over. When it comes to WWE, I don't think there's anybody touching Roman Reigns right now. Oh, not at all. Uh, yeah. it's, I, right. it's just no doubt to me. Yeah, the bloodline. Yeah, yeah. Teddy, what about you? Any, any names that I'm not thinking of? No, I don't have any. We're all acknowledging Roman Reigns. Yes. I didn't say I was acknowledging Roman Reigns now. Well, Teddy, and if he's got a problem with that, hook me up. I'll, we'll have a conversation. That's it. <laughs> but I, I'm I, kidding. I, I, no, no. But uh, again, the Sports Key to Wrestling Awards are coming up, and uh, uh, I can't wait. And I, by the way, I want to thank everybody for hitting the uh, uh, clicking in on our show here, the Time Machine, and. Uh, Somebody next hit week. it too hard last week and they broke it for a while, but it's working again. I noticed that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. ne next week we'll have uh, we'll go back in time again. You know what we need to do one of these days to go back in time, back to the days when uh, and Teddy, this was prime time in your uh, era too, with the days of uh, Ricky Steamboat against Ric Flair. Yeah, I was back there for all that. I know you were. I know you were. <laughs> and, and and those are you as you both know, those are my favorite times in wrestling. That I, I enjoy those old NWA, early WCW days because the fans were still at the point that they weren't sure if this was a show or if this was real. And watching those fans and anybody, if you're watching this show and if you're young and you've never gone back to watch early NWA, Ric Flair against uh, old Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair against Harley Race inside the cage. If you haven't watched those shows, go back and watch them, but pay attention to the fans on the outside of the uh, the ring. That is when wrestling was wrestling and people still believed. That's yeah. right. And by the way, by the way, uh, 
I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. Sports Kida is now negotiating to uh, possibly have uh, some of our staff at WrestleCon. Hey, very cool. Again, yeah. So uh, I'll keep people uh, up to date and see what the contract negotiations go. And there will be no broken tables in this contract signing. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, we're out of time. In fact, we're a little bit over time, but... We'll make up for it next week. Hey, guys, I'm Mac Davis. That is legendary pro wrestling journalist Bill After and my tag team partner from Road Trip After Hours. You can find that on YouTube every Friday. Mr. WWE Hall of Famer, Teddy Long. Goodbye, everybody. Holler.